Okay, good afternoon. Um, hope you're well and safe somewhere. Um, we're just going to continue with our uh, teaching of quantum physics. And uh, in the last lesson, we were talking about the photoelectric effect, and hopefully you have consolidated that information and maybe even stuck the questions by now. Um, today, we're going to move on to um, something called line spectra. So um, I'm just going to go through quickly the syllabus points which are written there and um, hopefully using a PowerPoint and some other things we're going to talk through and then I will model some answers and things like that. So um, the section of the syllabus just says energy levels in atoms and line spectra and um, we're going to look at three things um, but I'm going to break them down a lot further than that when I talk about what I'm looking for um, later on. So. We are going to show an understanding of the existence of discrete electron energy levels in isolated atoms, and uh, the example is hydrogen, and deduce how this leads to spectral lines. I'm reading that up front, you probably don't know what a spectral line is, so we're, we're going to go to that at some point. Um, we're going to also, it says here, be distinguished between emission and absorption line spectra, and then um, part C is recall and solve problems using the relation HF equals E1 minus E2. And hopefully you recognise the HF as being the um, energy that is stored in a photon. Okay, so we're going to be looking at those things. But I'm going to break them down a lot further. Um, I'm going to break them down into using emission spectra to help state the evidence for discrete electron energy levels. That's like a classic question. Uh, we're going to explain um, the dark lines and absorption spectra. That's also a question that's come up quite a lot. Um, to do this, we're going to have to remember things that we've done in the past, like converting electron volts to joules and back, which is a unit of energy that's a lot more um, convenient for very small amounts. Um, although it may not seem relevant in this context, um, it's an existing unit, so that we use that. Um, we're going to find the energy of photons from atomic energy level diagram. So that relates to that last part, the HF equals E1 minus E2. Um, so this is representing something in a diagram which we'll point out when we're using the PowerPoint. Um, we're going to recognise the number of possible energy changes that might happen for an electron within an atom. So there's only a very few, so we'll explain that. Um, we're going to recognise from these energy level diagrams if um, energy has been emitted or absorbed. Um, we should be able to tell that from the direction of the arrows in those diagrams, so we're going to do that. And um, we're going to find the maximum and minimum frequency of wavelengths of photons emitted within that atom. Uh, and they're kind of the reverse way around. One is like from a huge energy drop, that would be a high frequency. Um, but at the same time, you should realise that a high frequency probably means a low wavelength. And when we have a very, very small drop in energy within that atom or uh, for that electron, that will be a small amount of energy difference and therefore a, um, a lower frequency, which means a higher wavelength. So we will look at all those things. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm not going to stand in front of this all the time but um, it's the easiest way for me to show you big pictures so um, I hope that's okay. So um, we're going to start off um, with a lesson that I call um, what a star's made of um, and actually this relates to the part um, in, that I just went through relating to emission spectra, the idea of emission spectra and electron energy levels within atoms. So um, I start with this big question because um, if I asked most people that have studied science for a while what are stars made of, many of them would say hydrogen and helium, usually because they've studied fusion at some point or another in energy. Um, but did you ever stop to think how we know that? Because no one has ever been to one. In fact, we've only just um, managed to send probes out a little further than that, but we've been talking about hydrogen for some time. So the reason for this is because um, of light, we're able to analyse light. And so um, I'm going to take you through why when we do analyse light, it gives us some evidence of um, the way that electrons behave in um, atoms. So, um, so far in our story of the atom, we know 
that there is a nucleus and Mr. Rutherford worked that one out for us and that he said that electrons were orbiting but there must be a little bit more to it than that. So I'm going to hand over to a small video um, that I'm going to embed in this one um, about the scientist Niels Bohr who came up with the idea of electron levels in, um, in atoms without really talking about the evidence so we're just going to talk about what it is that we're trying to prove in the first place and then later on we'll talk about how these things with emission spectra prove this. Okay, so um, essentially all the star is is a very, very hot gas, but it's a particular one. It's mostly hydrogen, of course, but there are others. If we do give energy to gases, then they will behave in a similar way. And this is something to simulate that in the, um, in the laboratory. So <coughs> we can, what we do is we collect one of, one of these gases which is in a tube here, and we stick it in this box and pass electricity through it. And this is what we get. So I'm turning on the electricity here. You can see it's lighting up, and what we see down the bottom here is a number of particular lines. Now, where do they come from? Well, um, the light is coming from this box and through here and then into this here, which is a diffraction grating. So as you know, a diffraction grating, a little bit like a prism, will split the light into its separate parts. And uh, when we do that, we find that it's only very, very particular um, wavelengths of light, very, very particular colors. And only that particular gas will do that. So um, this one might be hydrogen, for example. If I grab another one, we'll see that the lines that we have here will be in different places. So let's look at that. So here's another one. I'll switch on the electricity and you can see it's a different colour from there but when you analyse it very, very closely you see that there are lines in different places. <coughs> now something that might be familiar to you but similar would be flame tests when you did flame tests in chemistry. Uh, and you might know that you can identify sodium by putting a, or a sodium salt, I should say, by putting, putting that thing in a flame. We are giving energy to the sodium salt, and when you do, it burns with a particular color, which is an orangey color. But there are others that burn with a very, very similar color. To the naked eye, you wouldn't necessarily know the difference. Um, but um, with this diffraction rating, we can analyze the light, know exactly what wavelength of light and what frequency of light that it must have been. And each atom, each element, I should say, not atom, each element is entirely individual, so we can identify which one is which. So let's get back to stars. If we analyze that light from the sun even, we'd find that we get this, which is a hydrogen emission spectrum. When we split the light, these very, very particular lines are here. And look, there's 700 nanometers, and we can see this must be somewhere in the 600s, which is what we've been saying all along. We, uh, we know that we should be able to estimate light around somewhere above 600 nanometers. And down here at the bottom, we've got violet here, which is somewhere close to 400 nanometers. And that is pretty much the, um, the range of visible light. We should be aware that when we start getting numbers around 800 that we must be outside of visible light. In this case it would be infrared. If we are less than 400, maybe somewhere in the 300s, they wouldn't make it close if you were estimating, then you should know that it's ultraviolet. They're still photons, but they're just not in the visible light spectrum. So anyway, this is, this is what you get from hydrogen. So this is where we return back to Niels Bohr and his idea of um, electrons being at a particular energy level. So just to remind you, <coughs> if I press play here, in Bohr's model, he's talking about electrons being at particular energy levels. He's trying to understand why they're stable. Now, for us, um, at this point, we're not too worried about what he was trying to achieve. What we're interested in is his idea being true. His idea was that the electrons could be at a number of energy levels. 
Now don't get confused, there doesn't have to be an electron at every energy level. It's not quite like electron shells, but it's similar. You're aware of the idea that some electrons might be further away. So an electron that might be further away has a little bit more energy. It's, it's managed to get pull away from the nucleus a little bit more, but it had to get that energy somehow. So the energy may have come from another number of ways. In the case of a hot gas, obviously, it's because it's in an extremely hot environment. So what we're saying is that it can, these electrons can only exist at very, very particular energy levels, and these emission spectrums prove it for us. So um, with Niels Bohr, he was just trying to figure out why this thing didn't have the electrons just pull into the middle. And he eventually came up and used Max Planck's work to say, well, there must be a very particular energy levels, particular quantums. <coughs> okay, so back to our hot gas. Hot gases produce light, and um, if they're hot enough, that is. They produce light. Before that, they produce infrared radiation. That's not a great surprise about that. We wouldn't be warm here on Earth if they didn't produce it and have it go through space that way. So what we're saying is that these electrons within each individual atom in hydrogen that's in the sun, and remember the idea is that these atoms are quite separate from each other. They're not interacting that much. They're quite separate. Um, so they receive their energy separately um, and when they do, what can happen is the electrons can move from one level to another um, and they'll go to a, a higher energy that level that way, but they don't stay that way, they're unstable being at high energy levels, so they have to give their energy out again. So let's carry on. So when an electron does go down and give up some of its energy, it releases a photon to do that. So it had more energy, maybe it's kinetic energy or something like that, and it releases this photon of energy which goes outwards in a package, and then it goes down by exactly that, much, that photon's um, amount of energy. So it's released that way. So that means it's a very particular amount of energy then it's going to have a very particular wavelength or frequency. And um, in this case, looking at this wave here, this is very far. We might say the energy level between here and here is not very much. This is actually the lowest energy level being on the inside and being on the outside is a higher one. If it just goes down that one, perhaps it is going to release a photon of red light because not very much energy when we have E equals HF, if E is very small, then F must be very small as well, which means that it's a low frequency, a high wavelength, it's a red photon, for example. Now, every one of those energy levels, every one of those energy drops represents um, one particular energy level. Now, this is an energy level diagram. Down here we have ground state, this is the lowest energy level that an electron would have within that atom of hydrogen and it's going to be um, stable there, that's where it's, it's most stable. This is one energy level higher and here we have one energy higher level. So these are all the possibilities that it could be at. Remember that is only one atom, uh, only one electron in that hydrogen atom. So these are the possibilities of energy levels that it could have. Okay, so this is just the first three levels. There are more. 